Hello everyone, I'm Naman, and today we will be talking about um, DSM to DTM, and like um, mention how you can generate DTM from DSM for free. Um, it's publicly available. If you want to check it out, just go ahead and check it out, and let's get started. Thanks for joining, everyone. Uh, just a quick um, agenda for the presentation. Um, we'll start with some introduction, some brief introduction. What is DSM and DTM and some use cases? Overview of this package, a demonstration and how you can use it, and how can you contribute if you want to. Okay, this I'm got a bit off guard because <laughs> I was expecting some animation in this. It's not there, but I'll just try to go ahead. So Rajat, he is a good friend of mine um, from uni. Um, he couldn't join. He helped me setting up with this package some time back. Um, he helped me packaging this package. Um, he helped me setting up GitHub Actions. He has nothing to do with geospatial. He is, in fact, finishing his PhD in material science. Um, but he, he, he did contribute in um, some other ways, so a big thanks to him. I'm Naman, I am from India, I'm based in Berlin, I have some roughly five years of experience in geospatial domain, and what do I do? I'm looking for a job. Um, I was impacted with layoffs a couple of months ago, and since then I, I, at the moment I'm actively looking for a job, preferably based in Berlin, but open to anywhere if any of you is hiring. Or if you know anyone who is hiring, please hit me up. That would be of great help. With that being said, let's get started. So what is DSM and DTM? Um, I believe most of you already know this. I assume that's why you are here in the first place. But still, that's a brief introduction. Both are raster data. In fact, both are a family of digital elevation models. And surprise, surprise, they represent elevation data. From Nadir, or in other terms or simpler terms, I'm generally looking from top, let's say as if you were sitting on top of the satellite or the sensor and you are looking down. So that's, that's, that's like every pixel is representing elevation data from Nadir view. DSM, that's short for digital surface model. It represents height of all the surface features above ground, including human-made structures like building and vegetation, while on the other hand, DTM, which is short for Digital Terrain Model, it represents height of bare earth surface without any human-made structures and vegetation. It can be derived from multi-reflect LiDAR point cloud, or it can be derived from DSM, but today we will be focusing on how you can derive it from DSM. Uh, I like this image. This is a good visual representation of the difference between DSM and DTM. On the left, you are seeing an image, so this green line if it was a DSM raster, the green line, each pixel would be representing the surface elevation values, which in this case involves uh, vegetation. On the right-hand side, you are looking at a DTM, so the brown line would be represented by the pixel values in a DTM raster. Just some uh, use cases of DTM for calculating heights using NDSM. NDSM is a short for normalized digital surface model. Basically, you subtract DTM from a DSM and you get something called NDSM, and you can use it to calculate height of objects like trees, buildings, etc. For radio frequency network planning, um, like some tower companies use some simulations to basically um, try, to they try to find the optimum location way to put a cell phone tower to, co to have maximum coverage. It is also used in engineering designs. DTMs can be used to evaluate the suitability of a site for construction projects, um, such as highway, highways, pipelines, and buildings. And there are multiple more use cases. These are just few examples. Let's look at an actual example of DSM to DTM. So what you are looking at right now on the right, um, it's a student housing from my uni. And this is the corresponding DSM. Now, I collected the data back in 2018, so it has been a while. Um, I collected data using um, DJI Phantom 3 Advanced, like multiple images, overlapping images, and the DSM was made using uh, structure from motion, um, using one of the proprietary softwares, AGSoft PhotoScan, and this is the DSM. It's missing the color RAM, but the red values represent lowest elevation values, and dark blue represents the highest elevation values. 
and this is the resulting DTM. Let's take a closer look. Let's compare them. So generally speaking, it gets the job done. Um, it had three main responsibilities. Like the first one was to remove man-made object or human-made object, which in this case was building. It did remove that. Second was to remove vegetation, removing trees. It did remove that. Um, there are some remaining vegetation. Um, it looks like I can't use it. Let me try again. True. Thanks. <laughs> so there are some trees over there. Um, and the third task was to retain the terrain um, profile, which it did. But let's take a closer look. So if you look at this example, this arrow, this represents the tree, which it did remove. But there are some shortcomings as well. So this package does some post-processing, which involves some interpolation. And if you closely look at this part, now, ideally speaking, we would have expected like a sharp distinction um, in, this, in this profile. Like, but, but as you can see, like there is some interpolation. And this, these values do have some lower elevation values, which shouldn't have been there. And this is because of interpolation. If you look at this part, um, now in the source DSM, there, so there was a pit apparently, but again, due to interpolation, some of the values got interpolated and some of the values, elevation values got reduced, which shouldn't have been the case. And this part, it did remove the building, but it did increase, once again, due to interpolation, it did increase some of the elevation values, which is not ideal. So it's not perfect, but depending on the use case, it can get the job done. So if your use case requires you to have an absolutely perfect DTM, I don't think this package is for you. I think what might work for you is maybe working with LiDAR point cloud data and directly generating DTM from that. But if your use case is somewhat simpler, let's say just calculating height of buildings, I think this might just work for you. Or let's say calculating trees heights and stuff like that, this might just work for you. How to use it. Um, by the way, this is also available on Conda. Like you can simply install it using Conda. Unfortunately, it's not available on PyPy. Um, but here, um, I'll, I'll show some steps how you can use it on Linux uh, using the repository itself. It's simple. Just clone the repository, make a virtual environment, install, requ um, install requirements. And finally, you install Saga. And how you can run it, simple. Just run Python. DSM, .dc, DSM to DTM.py, and you pass the path of the DSM using this argument, dash test DSM. And it will generate DTM in a folder called generated result. And it will also spit out the path of the generated DTM. And this is for Linux, by the way. For Mac, it doesn't work. I tried, it doesn't work. Because Saga is not supported on Mac, I am personally using a Mac device. I couldn't set it up on Mac, so I would conclude it doesn't work on Mac. Unless some of you, any one of you, could set it up on Mac, please let me know. I couldn't. I have no idea about Windows. I haven't tried it on Windows. If any of you try it on Windows, do let me know if it works or not. I have no idea. Code walkthrough. So it extensively uses GDAL and Saga throughout, and we will be looking at some examples. So this function, um, this is using Saga's command line interface. Saga does have an inbuilt functionality to generate DTM, but the results are not perfect. Like, so in a way, I would say this package is more a wrapper around Saga's functionality, which involves a lot of post-processing. And here you are looking at Saga's command line function to actually generate the DTM itself in the first place. Here you are looking at a... Um, GDAL functionality, basically Saga generates files in .sdat format. I explicitly tried to generate a file in .geotiff format as well. It, it, it didn't work, so I had to use some, some other um, uh, library to convert .sdat file to geotiff. Um, at least that was my use case. I needed geotiff. So I used GDAL translate for that. And a bunch of other functionalities as well. Like we will not cover all the functions, but just looking at some examples. So this is one of the post-processing to close gaps. Once again, Saga's functionality. And this is to smoothen the raster. Once again, Saga's functionality. You will see like there is a parameter radius equals to two. At the moment, there is no option for the user to pass this parameter unless the user actually goes inside the code and updates this value. 
in the future, I do plan um, to expose this functionality to the user so that the user can just uh, manipulate these values as per their use case. Um, it will be there in future, but at the moment, it's not there unless you explicitly go inside the code and update this value. Like mentioned before, it's not perfect. And for people who are concerned with the um, misalignment of this emoji, please stay with me. This will all make sense. Like mentioned, I couldn't set it up on Mac. I wanted to uh, set it up. I couldn't, so I ended up uh, creating a virtual machine on GCP. I still have it up and running. If any of you who is using a Mac device who wants to give it a shot, reach out to me. I'm happy to give you access to the VM as long as you don't exploit it. <laughs> happy to do that. Um, it's slow. Um, so the example that we saw took like 30 to 40 seconds, depending on your input DSM, how big is that is, and what's the resolution, it can take up to minutes. It's slow mainly because of Saga, and it, was in, it involves multiple steps, but it's also slow because it generates a lot of temporary files. Um, it's not good engineering. The last update was three years ago. There are no tests, there are no type hints, like it's lacking some of the basic stuff. Um, but work is in progress. Like, um, I wanted to have an example of Tattoo. Like, there is publicly available data thanks to this portal. I wanted to have an example of this building where we could have run this package on this building. And I did, it did produce a DTM, but every pixel had no data value. I don't know why. Probably because of CRS mismatch, I'm not sure. I didn't get chance to debug it. But I'll be on that after this conference. I did start refactoring multiple times in the past. I have multiple branches open in the package itself, but I think many of you can relate to this. I started, but I did not finish. So yeah, and that's why there's this emoji. How can you contribute if you want to? Give feedback. If you face any problems, please open up some issues. If you see any improvements, create a pull request. Um, go through the to-dos, and if you find anything interesting, please contribute. And there was supposed to be a screenshot of to-dos here, which is not there, um, where I listed a bunch of to-dos, which involve including adding tests, um, which actually is already done. I just need to uh, merge the branch. I'm setting up PyTest, um, setting up poetry, adding pre-commit hooks, adding documentation, um, moving the test files to a remote server or Git LFS, um, removing all the temporary files generation and just passing them as a raster.io object, and a bunch more. Once again, if you go to the repository's homepage, you can actually look at the to-dos. Um, but yeah, if you find it interesting, please take a look, give me feedback, contribute if you can. That's all. Thank you. Thanks for your time, and happy to take any questions. All right, so that was well, well, well within time. But anyway, <laughs> interesting presentation in any case. Before we start with the questions, let's see who is using Saga. Please raise your hand. OK, we have two people. So if I recall correctly, Saga was originally developed for Windows, right? Can you confirm that? Yeah. So do you use it on which system? Linux, Linux here, and you? On Windows, OK. So at least those two. And I'm a bit surprised it doesn't work on, on, on Mac. So yeah, you probably really want to get some feedback there. Yeah. Before we, we go to the questions, I'm very curious about one thing. Did you consider doing this on Grass instead of Saga? I did not, because like I mentioned, I did that like three, four years back. I did some Google search. and. Saga was one of the top results, and I just went with it. <laughs> that answers right. your question. OK. That's, uh, anyway, that's how life goes. So who has questions then? That was easy. Thanks. <laughs> yes. OK. Do you have any like uh, margin or for uh, for like uh, confidence margin uh, for the border of your DTM? Because since it seems to be an interpolation, uh, how do you manage 
to be sure of the elevation on the border of the produce DTM. Do you have like a radius or something that can uh, be considered as a margin, like confidence margin? So I do not explicitly use any confidence margin. To be honest, I don't know what that term means. Um, but I have used this package on DSMs which were not of a regular shape, that were basically not a rectangle, maybe let's say a triangle. So there was some area which was basically no data, no data value. And it does work on that. Like for the margin, let's say for the borders, it just retains those original no data values. Yeah, uh, my, my question is more like when you have like a DSM uh, provided by tiles, you know, you have different tiles and so you have to process them uh, like in an order, so yeah. in the end you have to match them, you know, on the... Yeah, that's a good question. No, I, I, I did not try that. I think actually that might be a good input point okay. to try. Thanks. Because, no, I can see, like, because if you try on different tiles, and again, this package does some estimations depending on the input DSM, like it calculates some parameters, so if the input DSM is of different tiles, it can result in different DTM, so on the border they might be some discrepancies in the value. So I think that's a good input, thanks. And to answer your question, I did not. OK, I did thank not you. Try. Yeah, actually, that would be good. Yeah, just, just open an issue. Thanks. We have plenty of time. Don't you have a question, Paul? That's what the co-chair does. <laughs> I mean, if there are no questions, they can also just enjoy their evening. Well, it's a bit early to that. Okay. But, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, people, I tried. <laughs> <laughs>